Hello, I'm Michelle Rain, Assistant Director at the Wood County District Public Library. Today is Tuesday, June 24th, 2014, and I'm talking with Millie Broca. Hi, Millie. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for being here today. Uh, this is Millie Broca, the current president of the Wood County Chapter of the Ohio Genealogical Society and a longtime member of the chapter. You're a former Woman of the Year for Beta Sigma Phi, and you're a former board member at the Wood County Historical Museum and currently on the Collections Committee at the museum. So I wanted to thank you for coming today to talk about um, your experiences growing up here in Bowling Green. Um, I think you're Bowling Green born and raised, right. is that right? right? So you've lived here your whole life. life. So tell me a little bit about your early life and um, who your parents were and what they were like and what it was like to grow up here. My parents were uh, Harry and Bertha Cramp. Mother was about uh, five foot. My father was over six foot, and they were quite a. You know, my mother would never have her picture taken with dad because there was too much difference in their heights. Um, I was born on South Enterprise Street. Uh, not too long after, I was about five, I guess. Um, I started to school at. Ridge Street, which is now torn down. Um, my parents lost their house, and so we had to move into my grandmother. Was that during the Depression? Yes. Well, my father worked for the state and the county at different times, and when the politics changed, he lost his job. So we went with my grandmother, and then we moved up. We moved down on South Prospect, and I went to South Main to school. And then uh, later they bought a house on North Prospect and Reed, so I ended up going to Ridge again. Um, and it was it was a it was a good time on South on South Enterprise. I can remember times we were not too far from the railroad, and this was during the time when the hobos would come through, and and um, if there were any out there, Mom would we, we always had to play on the porch. We couldn't go out and play in the yard. We had to play on the porch. Because your mom didn't want you to encounter the, the hobos? Right. You know, they would come up to the door and ask for food, and she just didn't want them, you know. So we had to stay on the porch. But What's it inside, like, the South Main School? It's completely different now. It's, some, it's an arts, creative space. What was it like inside then? It was, you know, the wooden floors. Um, and they were, you know, they were finished, but they weren't. You know, tiled like all this, this, the schools are now. You know, it was a two-story, and I went to the from second through fifth grade at, at South Main. And we had a, we always went outside for recess. Even had, in the winter. Well, not so much in the winter, but you know, we had at that point in time, the um, the schools had elementary. Um, people that came in and did phys ed for you. So we actually had some phys ed classes outside, you know, played ball and that kind of stuff. But did you have a favorite teacher? Or a least favorite? My favorite teacher, I think, was Miss, was, um, Miss Van Dorn, and I had her in the sixth grade at Ridge Street School. Another favorite teacher I had was Miss uh, Ro uh, Robeson. Robinson, Robinson. She taught Latin. Wow, you took Latin? In I took Latin because I thought I wanted to be a nurse. Oh. Well, after I got through high school, I decided I really didn't want to be a nurse. And it's a good thing I did not try to do that field because <laughs> I would have been a horrible nurse. Why is that? I don't have patience, yeah. you know. Um, I just wouldn't, I was making a horrible nurse. So I decided to go into secretarial work. And I saw that you went to Stotzenberger right. College. Where was that? Was that here in BG? No, it was in Toledo. Oh. Uh, a girlfriend and I uh, rode with her father who worked at the Toledo Blade. He would take us in in the morning and uh, bring us back. And when he didn't work, then we had to ride the bus. There was bus service between bus here service. and Toledo. Yes. Where did you get on the bus? Um, down in, on Worcester Street, okay, on the East Worcester, right around the corner there, there was a there was a it was called Cook's Newsstand, but the bus stopped right there, and we could get on there. How long did it take to ride it? 
Oh, about 45 minutes, I guess. Did I it stop really... along the way? Or no, did it, not it just between went here straight. and Toledo. Yeah, okay, went right straight to the bus station in Toledo. And then you landed at the college, or you had to walk to... We had to walk from the bus station to the college, but there was only a couple blocks. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh -uh. Did you, what did you study there? I... Strasburgers? Yeah. Shorthand and typing. Do you still remember shorthand? Uh, not really. It's something that people don't even know what it is anymore. Um... You know, actually, with the first job I had, I really didn't use it much. And so if you don't use it, you do, you do lose it. I probably could pick up parts of it, but they don't even teach it like, yeah. like that anymore. You know, it just... It looks like hieroglyphics now when yeah, you look at it. Yeah. yeah. So um, your family, you grew up here in Wood County. So you're, you were born here. I was born here. Was your father born here and your mother yes. born here also? Yes. They were both born in Wood so County. You are a true Wood County right. daughter. Right. Um, and then I think we were talking about your great grandfather immigrated here from Germany. Germany, right. Did anybody speak? That was two generations packed, but did anybody speak German not, in the home? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did we? Did I ask you who were your, what your parents were like? You said they were very tall and short, but were they jolly people? Or mother was know? more serious. Yeah, she was. Um, I I don't really know quite what word to use, but she was uh, very very serious. She didn't, you know, she could laugh, but not as much. My father was more laid back. Yeah. He was a. Um, Basically, a automobile mechanic ended up being um, general man, not general manager. Um, okay, Bob. Service manager. Service manager. Thank you. Of uh, Fort Garage. My mom was a stay-home mom. And where was the garage located? On North Main. Oh, okay. Now, how many brothers and sisters did I you have? I had one brother and one sister. And are they, they were both older. Both so older. I was the baby. You were the baby. baby. Yeah, yeah. They were about 16, eight, eight, 18 months difference between my brother and sister, and then I came along about four or five years later. Yeah. Were you close to them growing up? Not really. That's a big difference. Yeah. When you're that young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did they stay in the area too? No, my sister will move to uh, got married and moved to Kenton, Ohio, which is. Well, about 55 miles from south of here. My brother lives in, in Finley. Okay. What, are, um, what are some of the things that have changed in Bowling Green over all this time that you think are good changes and maybe some things that you don't like as much? Well, I, the downtown has changed. When we were growing up, you know, it was the thing to do on Saturday night was go downtown and sit in the car and watch the people go by. And um, now there's hardly any downtown to to see. So you would just sort of pick a parking spot yeah, and pull in? Yeah, and yeah. You'd walk around and then you... And what were some of the stores that were down there at that time? We had Isley's. And what's that? That's an ice cream store. Oh, okay. Um, there were... Uh, it was a Fronies, which is where Panera's is now. Okay. It was a, like a department store. It was a Penny's, Montgomery Ward, um, Lions store. So we had a, quite a variety. I can remember when Almonds was downtown. Mm -hmm. That's been a while. That's you know, the same building that. Yeah. So there weren't as many bars then at that time, or, or were they just spaced differently? They were spaced differently. Um, there was a, a pool hall and a bar on South, on North Main. Uh, there was always um, <laughs> Howard's. Howard's has always been there. Yeah, it was there for a long time. And there, there were bars, but you know. Um, College kids, did they go to the bars? Was going to the bar the thing that the college kids did then, like well, they do now? During some of that time period, the girls were 
were not allowed to leave campus or get in cars. You know, it was more restricted. You know, we're not as many college kids, so we didn't really come in contact with many college students okay. um, until after the war, after the Second World the War. The Second World War. Yeah. Which reminds me, you were you were young right. when Pearl Harbor was bombed, but. Can you, do you remember anything about that day or what it was no. like growing up during no. the war? No, not really. Okay. Um, you were telling me at one time that there was a, a dairy here in town where down on, was it, maybe town didn't extend as far. Was there a, a, a dairy on South Main area somewhere? Not dairy per se. There okay. were there were there were stores that um, sold eggs. I mean, people brought their eggs in and, and stuff like that. Okay. But it is a dairy itself. Okay. I don't recall one in South Maine. And I was reading that there were a lot of privately owned grocery stores. So right. it wasn't like you went out to a big giant grocery store like we do today. What were some of the private grocery stores? There were little mom and pop stores that were within each, you know, sort of like in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, there were also, there was also a Kroger's and AMP store. Okay. But when, if you needed a loaf of bread, mom sent you over to the little grocery store and mm -hmm. right close, within a block or two. Okay. And they were, they are practically all over town, you know. Um, I can remember, well, it, it, when we lived on South Prospect, there was one just a street over. And on, on uh, Reed and Prospect, there was one within a block or two. So, so the downtown area is just so really very different from what it used to be? Yes. Are there any changes that you really like with Bowling Green? I like the way the town is. Um, I like the way they've, they've done, mostly I like the way they've done downtown. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice if we could get some of the, some stores back other than tattoo parlors, and, <laughs> you know, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. Really? Um, you know, the mall has not taken off like no. people thought, so. Um, well, there used to be a big penny store, but that's long gone. and. Uh, no, and I don't think I think the mall is you know basically dying. I don't think, but that's true of some of the other malls too. It's, right, you know, right. It's a phase. Everything goes through phases. Yep. Hopefully, the downtown phase will come back. Have you um have you have do you have a favorite building in Bowling Green? Like I know the windmill is a landmark, um, but do you have any a favorite building that is either here or no longer here? No, there, I don't think I really have any favorites. I think the muse, the historical museum, is a neat building. Um, and as a kid, there was a house on um, South Main, which is now where Key Bank is. There was a funeral home, and they had a three stories in it. You know, and the attic was finished, basically. And my aunt and uncle lived there. Oh, and. Uh, I would go over and play with my cousin. We could go upstairs in the, in the attic and play with the clothes and stuff that were there. So that was kind of neat. What other things did you do for fun? We had tea parties. <laughs> <laughs> Rode our bikes around. At that point in time, you could ride. You know, when, when you got older, in the upper grades, you could ride your bike over the town. It didn't, you know, you didn't have to worry too much about anything. How far did town go? Like. What were the, the north and south boundaries? They went out to uh, Poe and to Napoleon. Oh, okay. I mean, there were, there were more, there wasn't this build up with businesses, but the, 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 basically the town went that far. Corporation was that far. Well, I've always wondered about Gypsy Lane Road because that is such an odd name to find here in Bowling Green, and I saw the story of why it was named that um, in one of the Bowling Green history books. Do you know the, the story behind that? 
Not really, other than I think it was the Gypsies that stayed out there is, is what I think I've, that's, I've heard. That's what it said, and then I, I couldn't imagine. I didn't know where um, the Romani people would have been coming through Ohio at that time. It's very, it, mm -hmm. I'd like to learn some more about, about that. that. Yeah. Um, so, let's see, did you ever get to go see movies at the Clozelle? Yes. What um, what movies did you see there? Oh, westerns. You had to go see the westerns. westerns. Um, and what was it like inside? It's completely different now. It's a bar. <laughs> right. It was, it was, I thought elegant, you know. They had a balcony and you always went up, you could go upstairs in the balcony and, and uh, I just thought it was neat. It was a, yeah. It was more of a, it, it was, was very fancy. Yes, I mean, I went was. in one time, it was still kind of starting to fall apart at that point, but it seemed really fancy. It's a, yeah. Had I big thought. red curtains and then box seats, which was amazing to me for a movie theater. Um, you mentioned riding your bikes. Where did you all, did you have a bunch of friends that you played with or? family or who were your friends and what were they like? Well, you, you know, you sort of tended to have friends in the neighborhood yes. where you lived. So when I lived in South, South May, or South end of town, I had friends that were, were, went to elementary school together. And then when I lived on, on the North end of town, the same thing happened, you know, the, the, and unfortunately, um, of all the friends that I can remember that I ran around with, they're all gone now. Oh. It's, you know. Uh, did you like school? Did you like high school? Yes, I liked it. Um, I can't say that I excelled, you know, I was, you know, but I was, I liked it. So I saw in the yearbook that you were a member of GAA and FHA. Now I know what FHA is because they had it when I was in high school, which at Future Homemakers of right, America. Right. But what about GAA? Girls Athletic Association. Oh, and so what did you all do as the Girls Athletic Association? Well, we played basketball, basically. Okay. Like any real basketball. And it says you guys organized the Sadie Hawkins dance. Yeah, well, I can't remember much about that. <laughs> <laughs> I never went to it, so I don't remember much about that. Okay. Um, um, so who were some of the important people in your life outside your family, and what made them important? Oh, that's a tough question. You know, I really can't think of anybody that stood out okay. as somebody that I remember. I, I know that in that time period, adults were treated with more respect than they are now. Uh, and, you, you know, teachers were given more respect, and it's... Yeah, okay. and in fact, when I was looking at the yearbook with a colleague and we were looking through the pictures, and she's a young woman just out of college, and she said to me, people were so much more formal in the 50s. Right. When you look at the pictures, right. it definitely was a different time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, if you had to compare that time with this time, what are the differences that stand out most in your mind? Beyond, I think I think basically that is one of the things I miss. You know the the, the respect that you gave to your elders. I mean, you you never called a an older person by their first name. You know that just was not done. And if you you, you know you would get called down on it if you did. You had more respect for the teachers. I mean, they you know they were the law. Um, I don't know. It's just, I think, you know, I know that there was some bullying in school, but I think on a general rule, each one was respected the other more than they do today. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads me into um, uh, one of my other questions, which was you were married and with a family when the 60s began. Did did, what did you think about the Civil Rights Movement, and did anything happen in Bowling Green that got your attention? Uh, 
Not really. You know, at, at that point, we actually lived out on, on where we live today, but it was not in the city at that point. So we were not in town, downtown, uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, and there were not really very many um, blacks in Bowling Green. The, the most of them that came in were from the university. I mean, there were a few, a few families, but not. Were there any troubles that you know of? Not locally that I can recall. Yeah. Well, um, the other thing I was going to ask you is, um, you have been the woman of the year from the Beta Sigma Phi um, social sorority. How did you get involved with them, and what were some of the things you did with that group? I joined in 1952, uh, just after I got a Stotzenberger and started working. One of my friends was already a member, and she talked me into joining. Um, we, and, you know, then after Bob and I got married, we did all sorts of things as a group. We took weekend trips. Uh, used to be able, you went down to, to, uh, to went up to, to Toledo to the supper clubs, and you had get-togethers. Uh, we used to work, uh, have, um, well, I think we even worked recycling once when they <laughs> first started, you know, as a group. We went out and worked recycling. We worked at the uh, fair. Oh, what'd you do at the fair? We sold tickets to the rides. Yeah, wow. And they still, I dropped out after I became a member of the, of the uh, historical board because I just was running out of times. Yeah. yeah but, and we sold tickets. No, we did not sell tickets at the uh, tractor pull. But we took the tickets, and uh, they, they're still doing that today, the group. Wow. It's, uh, this is one of the big money makers. Yeah. We used to have card parties, you know, for, for uh, polio and uh, more. And we did a lot of service things as well sure. as the social things. Now, you, you said you went to the supper clubs. I don't think I know what a supper club is. <sighs> well, it's... It's a club where you can go and have a large, have a dinner, and then they have a, a entertainment. Oh, okay. So it's not like dancing, but there, there you could be dancing too. But they okay. usually had entertainment there. Okay. And how often did you? It seems like um, people from Bowling Green didn't really go to Toledo a lot. Is that something that's not that I'm not understanding? Did y'all go up there a lot for entertainment? We maybe once, twice a year. Okay. Used to go up, uh, sometimes they would go up to like the Valentine, the Paramount yeah. Theater, which were elegant theaters at that point in time. Did they show movies or? Movies, did, yeah. Okay. I saw that um, as part of the, I think it's with Beta Sigma Phi, you helped deliver books at the hospital. You had a little book cart that you all would take around what was the hospital like at that point, and how has it changed? <laughs> it's changed enormously. Um, that's a good question to ask Bob. Bob, okay. okay. All righty. Well, I know that it's expanded fairly recently. Right. right. But, yeah. Did you enjoy doing that with uh, the book card? Well, actually, I was not involved in that. Okay. One, of the, one of the other chapters did that. It was not okay. the chapter that I actually was in. All right. There were um, five or six chapters in town. Okay. And each chapter sort of did different things, but that's... Well, so the big, the big passion that I know you for is the Genealogical Society. When did you get involved with genealogy, and what do you find so interesting that keeps you going? I got involved in about 1992, and really, after we retired in 1993, I really got involved. Um, I think it's because it's, it's fascinating. You just never know for sure what's going to turn up. And I keep looking for that skeleton in my closet. I haven't found it yet, but I'm sure it's there <laughs> somewhere. Um, and it's, it's fun to try to help other people 
get started and find uh, their relatives. Have you found anyone else's skeletons? Not really. Okay. But other people have found theirs. Oh. So I'm, I keep hoping, you know. <laughs> I had I one uncle, one great uncle that was married five or six times, and I keep trying to find out all the wives in between. You know, I've got two or three of them, but I can't find all of them. <laughs> Where did all the wives go? Yeah. Do you have a favorite um, resource that you like, either at the library or over at the genealogical office in the courthouse? I think the library, between the, the genealogy society and what the library's done, has basically most of the resources that we have in the, in the genealogy office. I find um, going to family search mm -hmm. is very helpful. I, got a, I do a lot of work there. Um, I've also used Ancestry, but you've got to be careful using those two facilities. The records are okay, it's if you, you, but you can't take for gospel what somebody else has put out on the family. Yeah. I like opening the, uh, the cases for the Wood County and the Bowling Green history section, and there are so many fun little books that people have self-published or you know, compiled. Do you have a favorite among those? We keep going back to the Bowling Green Cecil Centennial book. And um, the, uh, the 1897 historical and biographical record of Wood County. But there again, uh, you've got to be careful because people paid to be in that book. Oh, they did? Yes. I didn't realize that. Yes, they I, paid. Uh, that was a minimum. Well, at that time, it was probably more. But uh, so they made sure that the information that they put in was favorable for them, you know. So but, That but, would explain a lot about that book. <laughs> yes. And you know, there are a lot of people that are not in it, and that's for, for that very reason, because they had to pay to be in it. Because that's where I found your great-grandfather. And it said things like he was a prosperous and wonderful person. Yeah. So that explains the language. And I kept right. wondering, well, who would have written such a nice thing about everybody in the book? That's why. <laughs> well, that was, that was um, something that I've learned. So thank you. <laughs> um, so let's, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your husband, Bob. How long have you been married? It will be 58 years in September. Congratulations. That is a a very, very successful, long a long time and a successful <laughs> <long> achievement. <laughs> so do you remember your first date? I understand that you guys might have different memories about your first date. Uh, our first date. Our church was having a hayride and we were both in some of the same classes in high school. And he also went to the same church. So I asked him to go on the hayride with me. And he that did was not, very brave. Yes, it was, and he didn't really want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think he knew how to say no. And uh, so that was the first, first and, our very first date, and we did not date again until after he came back from the service. Okay. And we, we uh, reacquainted at the bowling alley, and that's how we got started dating again. I understand you were a big bowler. As in? I used, well, yeah, when I was younger, I used to run about 160 average. Well, I was looking in the paper and it said, like, it would say Millie broke a 324. What does that mean? Like, is what? that your total game score or? Yes. Was okay. this just recently that you saw no. this? No. These were some older. Um... It probably meant that the, for two games, I had a total okay. of 324. Okay. It was not one single game because you only get 100, 300 for the highest okay. you can get. Well, speaking of things that are gone, you bowled at Varsity Lanes. Is that Actually, I bowled at the very first Elmar, which is where the post office is now. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. My father was, was a bowler, quite a good bowler. And uh, when I was in high school, I started going up to the bowling alley because he, he and Mom would bowl on... Uh, Weekends okay. with other couples that they yeah. were, and I got started bowling then. And the, so now Varsity Lanes is go, is closing; closed. they're closed. Right. Um, so the so the second Alamar is the one now at the corner of Main and Poe. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Did they move? They needed larger space, or I wonder 
why they changed locations? The post office went, bought the property, I think. It was oh, all... okay. And off they went. Well, so, yeah, then they built down there, and then that built, that burnt, and then they oh. rebuilt. You know, this, 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 the history of fire in Bowling Green deserves a, a topic all, a, all on its own. There have been so many fires. Do you have any background on why the place seems to catch on fire, fire so much? Well, originally in the, very, in the 1800s, it was because they were all wood, but I don't know. You know, okay. I don't know if they ever decided what caused the, the Montgomery Ward fire. Yeah. That was a memorable one as far as we were concerned. We, were, we hadn't been married too long. We lived in a, a, a garage apartment on Buttonwood. And uh, when that fire went up, it was on South Main, so we had to come over and watch it. We had to take it. a look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well um, you said you retired in 92. From, no, I retired in 93. 93. And you worked in the chemistry department right. at BGSU. What did you do there, and did you enjoy it? I was uh, started out as a, basically a typist, worked my way up to office manager. Isn't it? I mean, that would have been difficult. It seems like in the chemistry department there would be a lot of numbers that you're typing. A lot of formulas. Formulas, yes. and that and that wasn't easy on a typewriter. No, and in the beginning, you know, you'd have to, particularly on exams or something, you'd have to draw them in and. <laughs> But, uh, and a lot of times when I was typing thesis or, or um, doctoral um, manuscripts, you'd leave space. Oh, okay. And then the, the author would come in and draw the pictures. Well, that would have been a lot easier. Yes. And then it got to the point where we were typing manuscripts on when the computers started and uh, we bought programs software programs that would draw the figures and you could do the so we had to do so had to put them in too. what did you think when computers came in where did you like them did they make your work easier well yes when I first started back I, I worked at the university uh, when I first got out of Stotzenberg's and then the, in the uh, admissions office and the uh, and then turned into the placement office and the veterans office. And then I, I quit when uh, our first child was born. And that's why I came back and then in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, and by that time it was the electric typewriters. Yeah. And then I, I, I advanced to what they called a Magna Card. I don't even know what that is. Well, <laughs> it's a typewriter, but as you typed it would punch cards like they used to have um, uh, oh, they were about like this long. Oh, do you remember punched. the hole punch? Yeah, I they would mean, punch. I don't know what they they punch cards. Yeah. And you took them down to another building and they yeah. ran them through a machine. Yeah, right. So they did that with um, this typewriter that wow. I had uh, would do that, and then uh, it, it, it developed that you could actually do a little correcting without having to retype everything. But I loved the computers when they came in because then you really could could. Uh, Correct yeah. without having to retype the whole manuscript. Yeah, Unless you had a professor that was invariably changed everything. So <laughs> I had one that would, he'd, he'd type his, his manuscript and you, you'd type it. He'd proofread it, bring it back, and you'd make all these changes. And by the time he got done after three or four times, he'd actually gone back to what he first, first started one. with. But, you know. I think today's professors might be astonished to learn that they could pass their manuscript off to someone else to type. I think well, they're that was a great to thing type of, their own. That was the great thing about computers. Once all the professors got them, they started typing their own work. So yeah. that did help. Yeah. Did you, did you meet any interesting characters, famous scientists, while you were there? We, you know... There were different uh, visiting professors that would come in and give lectures and stuff. But, you know, normally we didn't get to meet them, but um, and there were some some um, of the postdocs that went on to greater things. But yeah, um, if you could do anything you wanted to now, what would you do, 
and why? You know, I don't know. If, if you'd asked me that 10 years ago, I might have said I'd like to travel. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm old enough, I don't really have a desire to, to travel around. And I like what I'm doing and I'm happy, so I don't think I'd change a whole lot. Thank you, Millie, for spending the time with me today and answering my questions. It's been a real pleasure. You're welcome.